In this question, we are asked to use the given data to find the five number summary and answer a few other questions, including uh, what units would go with the answers and to compute the interquartile range and find the lower fence and the upper fence, uh, which would be the boundaries of the that separate the outliers from the non outliers and then identify which box plot fits. Right, so the five number summary is going to match up with the box plot uh, vertical locations that are uh, labeled with the values. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is go ahead and find that five number summary. Uh, we'll copy the data right into Excel, just copy and paste. And then uh, we want the five number summary. Now, what is the five number summary? The five number summary for box plot includes the minimum smallest value in the data set, the first quartile. So this will be the value that separates the lower 25% or the lower quarter. It's also known as the 25th percentile. Then the median, also known as the second quartile, or the 50th percentile, the third quartile, which separates the bottom 75%, so it's also known as the 75th percentile, and the maximum, the largest value in the data set. Um, now, some of these things you could actually find just by looking. You could sort the data and just figure out what is the smallest value and the largest value, but there are also Excel um, functions that can help you with that. But it does say here to use the by hand method described in the textbook and the linked video. Okay, so we do not want to use Excel functions. So we'll go ahead and sort this data first. We're going to just select the data or select the column that the data is in and then go to the data tab in the ribbon there and then choose A to Z. So now you can see that the values start um, from the smallest and go up from smallest to the largest. So now we can easily identify the minimum is 32 and the maximum is 177. Now we want to find the median, which is the middle value. Now notice that we can see the row numbers here. The first row is just the header. So um, when we see that the last value is in the 21st row, considering that the first row is just the um, label, then we would say there's 21 minus 1 pieces of data. So there's a sample size of 20. And since n is 20, that is useful to us because it's even. We can, uh, we need to know when we're looking for our median and our quartiles we need to first determine if we have an even number of values or an odd number of values. If it's an odd number of values, then it's easy to just find the middle value and then the middle of the lower 50% and the middle of the upper 50%. Um, when it's an even number of values, though, we're going to have two middle values, so we'll have to average those. So let's find the two middle values. So if there are 20 pieces of data, then our median would be between the 10th and the 11th values since there's you know half of 20 is 10. So we want to go to the 10th value. Now just to make it a little easier I'm going to have an index uh, row here so we can see uh, one two three I'm just going to start that pattern and then copy it down just to make it a little easier to identify the values. So you can see here is the first value uh, the first value is 32 and the last value is 20. Uh, I'm sorry, the 20th value is 177, I meant to say. So now half of 20 is 10. So we know that the middle value has to be in between the 10th and 11th numbers. Um, they happen to both be 64. So when you average those, you're still going to get 64. Um, so if they were not the same number, you would find the average by adding them together and dividing by 2. Now, um, now that we've found the median, now we can work on finding the first quartile and the third quartile. So let's start with the first quartile. So remember, this divides the lower quarter of the data. What is one quarter of 20? 
if you divide 20 by 4, you get 5. So your first, first quartile should be in between the fifth and sixth values. Another way of looking at it is here is your, um, your first 10 values, right? Let's go ahead and color those differently. There's your first 10 values, and 10 is an even number. So the two middle values are the fifth value and the sixth value. Even if you counted from both ends up, right, your first value and your tenth value, then counting into the second value and the ninth value, then the third and the eighth, the fourth and the seventh, the fifth and the sixth. Those are the two middle values. So we want to average those two middle values to get our first quartile. So we're going to add 40, which is the fifth value, with 48, which is the sixth value, and make that a quantity so that um, in the order of operations, we want to divide the whole sum, which is 88, divided by 2. And so you can see that it makes sense that 44 would be right in the middle of fifth, five, uh, the fifth and sixth values, right between 40 and 48. So that is our first quartile. Now we'll do a similar process for the third quartile, except we'll use the upper 50% uh, and divide that in half. So again, um, if we go five values down, that's half of these 10 values, right? Or you could look at it like this, um, counting up from the bottom. Between the fifth and the sixth values, we have 76 and 80. So we'll go ahead and average those. With a quantity, using parentheses, I'll add 76 plus 80 and divide by 2. Um, so those are my five, uh, the five number summary I needed for the first part of this question. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put those in. Uh, 32, 44, 64, 78, and 177. Okay, now what units would go on each of your answers above? Well, we're talking about lengths of rivers in kilometers, so we would want to say km for kilometers, I think. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so that's your units are usually noted there in the title. And we want to compute the interquartile range. The interquartile range is the distance between the two interquartiles. Um, but before we do that, I'm actually going to have us identify the box plot down here. Um, and then we'll come back up to the other parts. So remember, the five number summary should match up with the box plot. So we want to find the box plot that has a minimum of 32 and a maximum of 70, 177. Uh, so, oh, oh, actually, no, we don't, because these are modified box plots. So you'll notice that none of these options have 177 on the end of the box plot. And that is because um, you were, were working with modified box plots, which show outliers. So in a modified box plot, instead of the whiskers extending all the way to the minimum and maximum, if there are any values that are uh, too far away, we call them outliers, and those will be denoted separately, and then our whiskers will just stop at the last non-outlier. So what we need to do then is identify where the last non-outlier is um, on the right side. We should also do it for the minimum, um, but since I'm noticing that all of these options only have um, an outlier denoted on the right, it kind of gives us the opportunity to uh, realize that we're only going to have one outlier since all the options only show one outlier and that that outlier is probably going to be this number 177. And <clears throat> now looking at it, you can kind of tell that 177 is pretty far away from 121. So it makes sense that it might be an outlier because it's it's a good deal farther away than any of the other values are from each other. All right, so let's figure out exactly how to identify this. Um, 
I just noticed something else. Um, since the minimum is 32, and the only option here that shows 32 as a minimum is this answer here, the first one, that's got to be the right answer. <laughs> I don't know if it would always turn out like that, um, but it kind of made it easy here. But let's go ahead and still um, do the steps to identify where our last non-outlier should be. It makes sense that it would be 121 if we only have one outlier on the right. So again, this, this answer makes sense. This one also shows 121 as the last non-outlier, but let's go ahead and calculate um, the boundaries of the non-outliers. So first, to do that, we'll need the IQR. Now this problem leads us through the steps, sort of, um, that are outlined in the reference packet and in the book. So in the reference packet right towards the top, um, this is page three, and you can see right here where it says outliers for box plots. This is where we're going to find the information we need to be able to answer the question. So you can see the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. And that is also the distance of the box, like the length of the box from the first quartile over to the third quartile. So we want to find this interquartile range first. So let's do that by subtracting our interquartiles. Um, so our interquartiles are the first quartile and the third quartile. So our IQR is 78 minus 30, uh, sorry, minus 44. So I got 34. And then we're supposed to put the units in the second box. So again, this is kilometers just like the original data. Now we are asked what is the lower fence and the upper fence, meaning the boundaries of the non-outliers. So we're going to find the two values, the lowest value that's not an outlier and the highest value that's not an outlier. Um, now looking back at the reference packet, you can see that to identify your low fence, you're going to need to take your first quartile and subtract one and a half times the IQR and uh, for your high fence, you're going to start at Q3 and add 1.5 times the IQR. So let's first find 1.5 times the IQR. So 1.5 times the IQR is 34 times 1.5. So we can literally just take 34 and multiply it times 1.5. I'm using a cell reference right there. Um, you can also type it in by hand, of course, equals 34 times 1.5 and there is the interquartile range. So now to find the low fence, we're gonna start at Q1, which is 44, and subtract the uh, one and a half times the IQR. And since it's negative seven and there's no value here that's negative seven, that means we don't have an outlier on the low side, okay? Now the high fence or the upper fence We're going to take the third quartile and add one and a half times the IQR, and that's 129. So notice that 121 is the last value that does not exceed 129. 177 is greater than 129, so that one is an outlier. Okay. So let's go ahead and put this in. Negative 7 for the lower fence in kilometers. and then, what was the other one? 129 for the upper fence. Again, this is kilometers. All right. Now we can notice that 32 is the end of the um, whisker. It's the lowest value that is not an outlier, and it happens to be the minimum. All right. So no outliers on the left. Then the first quartile lines up with 44. Okay, like that. Then the median of 64, right there. The third quartile of 78, and the maximum of 177 is an outlier, and the 
um, small, the largest value that is not an outlier is 121. So you can see this dot here, which is to represent the outlier of 177, is right there close to 180, but a little bit less than 180. So that looks about right. And uh, now we've answered all the parts of this question.